Hey, what's happening? YouTubers are back with a brand new action figure review. And today we're taking a look at the brand new Hasbro Marvel Legends Spider-Man. Based on his appearance in the Japanese TV series, it was based back in the 1970s and often referred to as Supaida-Man. But I'm hyped to get this in, mainly because it's such a niche Spider-Man series that, like, it has its own fan base. And it's kind of grown like a cult following over the years, in my opinion. But I'm hyped to get this in because I missed out on the SH Figure Arts one. Now is this one going to live up to that one? I highly doubt it, but... It's a consolation prize. It is what it is. <laughs> Anyways, like we always do with our views, let's get started with the box art first. So on the front of the box, you see the Spider-Man figure and the render, you know, how much we love these box arts. Uh, you see Spider-Man written down here in Japanese and up here in the top. And then on the side is a digital render of the figure. And on the back is another image of the figure itself. Although it also shows the accessories here. I will say, I actually like the back of the box or the whole box art actually in general compared to other ones we've seen before. And then on the side right here, it shows the actual artwork of Supaida Man. And the thing is, with this box art, it looks okay aesthetically because of that. It's so unique. But when comparing it to the other Spider-Man box, like the Amazing Fantasy one, I'll do a review on this soon as well. But aesthetics of this, it just looks so much better on this one than this. That's why I said, like, box art makes a difference, especially if you're going to charge a premium for these because it's supposed to be the anniversary series. Like, this comic art or this artwork on the left side of the boxes should be throughout the whole packaging. It shouldn't be the digital renders of the figures, but that's just my personal opinion. Let me know what you all think in the comments below, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Which box art do you think looks aesthetically better? In my opinion, it's this one. All right, that's enough about the box art. Let's go and get the figure out of the box. All right, here's Spider-Man out of the box. Let's take a look at his accessories first. So he does come with an additional set of fisted hands. It's kind of frustrating because I've always said in my reviews, Spider-Man should have at least three sets of hands. Fisted hands... In this case, relax or wall crawling hands because he shouldn't have thwipping hands. And he has these set sets right here, which is how he is in the series. So to only see an additional set of hands is kind of frustrating, especially since we're paying a higher premium because it's the anniversary line. Then he also comes with these web accessories, which we've seen before. And another thing he comes with is this long web string that we've seen reused several times, especially in this anniversary line. We've seen it in other figures. This is kind of frustrating because on the series, he actually uses like a rope. So... <laughs> Hasbro couldn't have sculpted like a plastic rope and it's instead of using this like reuse part over and over again It's kind of frustrating, but it is what it is. All right now Let's take a look at the figure itself. Let's get started with the head sculpt first So I do like the head sculpt There is some resemblance to how he looked in the Japanese series and you can see the wrinkles in his face So you can tell he's clearly wearing a mask So that looked pretty cool and I did a little bit of research The reason why these web lines mismatch is if you actually look at the photo like the source material of the series his web lines did mismatch, so that's not a QC issue or a blemish. That is how it's supposed to be in the series. And the reason for that is in the series, this part is supposed to show that he's actually wearing a mask over his head. That's why it kind of overlaps and mismatches the line right there. Another thing I want to note about the head sculpt is you can kind of see the eyes aren't your traditional white painted eyes. There has this sort of like silver metallic finish. You just have to look real close, but you kind of see it right there. Now, when taking a look at the rest of the figure, it is pretty spot on to what we saw in the series. And design wise, it's pretty simplistic. It's like any other Spider Man you've seen before, just with the slight modifications. God, I hate that little peg hole in the back. Why couldn't they just sculpt a new one for this or just cover it up? It looks pretty ugly. But you can see he does have the pinless technology on the elbows and the knees. And I do like this right here on his wrist if we take a closer look. After taking a closer look, you can see his bracelet right here, which is supposed to be the source of all his powers. You can see the fine sculpting and detail, so kudos to Hasbro on that one. That's a nice attention to detail. If you're looking closely, you can even see the fine detail. It says Spider-Man right there. Now, it is a little bit misaligned. I'm not going to nitpick about that because it's a freaking small-ass wristband from a domestic line. Now, here's my biggest gripe when it comes to this figure is articulation. For one, it's using the ab crunch, and you all know I don't like the ab crunch. I think they should do away with it in certain characters and just use the diaphragm cut. So ab crunch is there, and yeah, it gets a nice range. But when you actually get it in hand, the torso feels really hollow and cheap. And another thing, there's no butterfly joints. So how are we going to have a Spider-Man figure with no butterfly joints? The reason why I bring that up, so if we look at it, the retro-carded Spider-Man, the Miles Morales Game Reverse Spider-Man, the Renew Your Vows Spider-Man all have butterfly joints. Even this crappy Future Foundation Stealth Suit Spider-Man has butterfly joints. Why couldn't they put it on this Spider-Man figure right here? To me, it's like one of those things where Hasbro was a lot of their budget and cheaped out and was like, all right, here we go. Here's our Spider-Man for this. And didn't really put much effort. Yeah, you could say it has the pinless joints. 
I would have much rather, and this is a hot take in my opinion, and just my own personal preference, I would have much rather had pins on there like here if it meant getting butterfly joints. It made no sense to not give a Spider-Man figure no butterfly joints. Then again, no other MCU ones ever had them either. So maybe because they're considering this a movie one, so or a live action one, I should say. So no butterfly joints. In my opinion, that's really frustrating, especially when he's trying to get in his signature pose. But having said that, let's go ahead and take a look at the articulation anyways. So there's a disc hinge at the neck, so I can look that far down and that far up. There are shoulder swivels and bicep swivels right there. Double jointed elbows, pinless. So that's a nice range, not bad. And of course, like I mentioned, the ab crunch, ugh, like that. <laughs> and can go that far back and then there's also the outdated waist cut like come on you can't tell me in the comments well that doesn't look awful and then of course has your thigh swivel double jointed pinless knees and here there's another thing i want to ask you all in the comments below is it just me or is the plastic that hasbro is using nowadays like cheaper or just i don't know what that is but it's freaking hella hard to like move the joints or break them up a little bit to pose them i don't know if it's just my figures or if you all have the same issues as well are they starting to turn into NECA circa 2018 and 19 where you have to heat these things up beforehand? But there is no boot cut, surprisingly, but there is ankle articulation and ankle pivot. All right, now I'm just going to jump right into size comparisons. And first size comparison, here's Spider-Man standing next to a couple of other Spider-Man with butterfly joints. We have the retro carded Spider-Man on the left and the Renew Your Vow Spider-Man on the right. And next size comparison, here is standing next to some more Spider-Man figures. And to be honest with you, I'm going to keep it 100. They're all pretty much going to be Spider-Man size comparisons. But here he is standing next to the retro-carded Symbiote Suit Spider-Man, a.k.a. the Just Jay Hernandez Spider-Man, and the god-awful Future Foundation Stealth Suit Spider-Man that nobody asked for. And next size comparison, here he is standing next to some live-action MCU Spider-Man. We have the homemade suit on the left and the upgraded suit on the right. And I stand corrected. It looks like they did put butterfly joints on this figure just not this one. So what the hell? Why didn't they put it on this figure? And next size comparison here is standing next to some Spider-Man figures from the Sony-verse. We have the end of the Spider-Verse Miles Morales Spider-Man and the Diamond Select Toys Amazing Spider-Man 2 figure. Now, I'm curious to see because Across the Spider-Verse is supposed to be coming out next year. And I'm wondering if he's going to be featured in there. And last size comparison here he is standing next to the Marvel Legends Stanley. All right, some overall thoughts on this figure is, you know, despite the butterfly joints, it's an okay figure. It just falls short of the mark of being a great figure just because of those lack of butterfly joints and also just the lack of an additional set of hands. I think it would have made a difference if they would have given like a wall crawling hands or just relaxed hands or even trigger hands because at some point in the series, this Spider-Man does use a gun and he could have come with gun accessories or reused the same old Nerf guns they used before. Like that would have made a difference in my opinion just in terms of value because at the $30 price point you're paying for this, is it worth it? Here's what I'm conflicted. I want to say yes, just because it's such a niche character or like a special character that you're not really going to see many of out there besides the Figwarts one. That's going for Mad Bread in the aftermarket. So this is like the Constellation one, which is not really a good one to be honest with you. But is it worth the $30 price point? Kind of. If it, like I said, anything, the little slight changes like a butterfly joint or additional accessories probably would have made this a great figure. It's just kind of frustrating because like I've been waiting for one of these personally and they kind of like half-ass it in my opinion. Yeah, it's got the pinless joints, woohoo. But it doesn't have a diaphragm cut. It's still using the waist cut. It's still using the ab crunch. And there's no butterfly joints. But I still appreciate it for what it is. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below, YouTubers. And like always, if you like what you see, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Go ahead, subscribe. Thanks for watching.